So let me thank all of the commissioners uh, and then now turn it over to, to Lourdes Castro Ramirez, uh, the CEO, and really one of the driving forces for the Choice Neighborhood uh, uh, application and planning process which has taken place and for being sort of the, the inspirational head as well as the authoritative head uh, for getting things done. Uh, she knows communities. She has uh, led other communities uh, outside of San Antonio. The experience is vast and the opportunities which she is providing for San Antonio Housing Authority and the communities within which we all reside is, 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 is significant to say the very least. Lourdes. Commissioner Gambit, uh, thank you very much for um, that warm introduction and uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I'm Lourdes Castro Ramirez and it's my pleasure um, to serve as the President and CEO of the San Antonio Housing Authority. Uh, I'd like to take just a moment also um, to recognize and thank uh, the leadership of the Housing Authority um, with you know, the, the chairperson, um, Mr. Um, Ramiro Cavazos and our vice chair, uh, Brian Herman. Um, and I also would like to acknowledge uh, Commissioner Munoz, uh, who has been on our, our board um, for just over a year and also serves in the capacity of principal of Edison High School. And um, as you know, uh, Commissioner Gambetta um, mentioned earlier, the work of choice builds upon the work of promise. And the work of promise is to transform uh, and to signi significantly improve the educational outcomes of youth uh, in the SAISD uh, school system. Uh, and so having Commissioner Munoz on our board um, is you know, extremely valuable because he's giving us sort of his perspective um, from, you know, from being a high school principal. Uh, and really, you know, I, I would say that we have uh, one of the most committed dynamic um, groups of leaders um, that are responsible for providing uh, leadership uh, oversight and policy making decisions at the board level. Uh, I would also like to, uh, to thank the staff. We have a number of uh, staff with us today that are uh, here both um, that are involved, that are drivers of the choice. Um, as mentioned earlier, uh, Ari Porter, uh, Lorraine Robles, Kathy McCormick, uh, but there's a number of other people that work at the Housing Authority that um, in their own way um, support this initiative. This is a priority for us. Uh, choice neighborhoods is a priority for the Housing Authority and it's a priority for the Housing Authority because we are committed um, to work in partnership with all of you around the table and others that could not be with us today to transform the housing um, of the weekly courts community, to transform the neighborhood, and to transform the people. And so what does that mean? Um, we know based on um, whether you know, you're, uh, you're from the city or whether you um, have come across this through the data that, that has been collected th both through promise or through choice, that there have been, um, there, there's been tremendous disinvestment in this, in this neighborhood. Um, and it's not a disinvestment that occurred in a decade, it's um, you know, years and years of disinvestment. So to be able to um, transform and to be able to invest, it, you know, it takes really um, a collaboration. It takes everyone uh, committed to doing their part uh, to create better schools, uh, to um, increase um, and provide quality housing opportunities, uh, to connect to resources um, in the community, including to you know, have better connections to our community colleges. Uh, and this, the synergy, the commitment, um, the resources, we know they're, they're there. And we, we know they're there because for the last three years, and maybe even more than that, um, the collaborative, the collective we, we have been successful in getting uh, committed resources to ensure that uh, the city is addressing uh, some of the infrastructure needs on the east side. Uh, Promise through United Way or United Way through Promise has been able to secure over 20, about a 25 million grant that's going directly into the schools and into creating early childhood childhood opportunities for youth. 
Uh, last week, um, the chairman, um, uh, Ramiro Cavazos, myself, Mayor Castro, Councilwoman Taylor, uh, the CEO of the um, San Antonio Growth on the East Side, we all had an opportunity to be in D.C. Uh, and had an opportunity to meet with uh, Secretary Donovan. He is the secretary over uh, the Department of Housing and Urban Development. And it was, um, I think, one of the messages uh, that we carried from San Antonio to D.C. was that we're ready. We're ready to see this neighborhood transform itself. And it's not just Saha saying that, or it's not just the, the political leaders saying that, or the elected officials. It's the community, it's the residents of Wheatley Courts, it's the children of uh, Wheatley and Sam Houston, it's the neighborhood that is saying, we're ready to see changes in our neighborhood. And um, we were asked why um, we accelerated the, basically the planning, um, as I think many of you all know that uh, the Housing Authority secured a planning grant, a choice planning grant about a year ago. And uh, Secretary Donovan asked, um, that, you know, these planning grants are two-year planning grants. Uh, and he asked the question, how is it that you got planning done in one year? And we said, well, the planning didn't start just, just one year ago. It, you know, started with the East Side summits that were championed by Mayor Castro and Councilwoman Taylor. Uh, it was also led by United Way and uh, um, Trinity University and the various partners that were involved with conducting the planning efforts around education. And so CHOICE built upon that. Uh, so today, really, for us, the purpose of today's luncheon is, one, to, to say thank you to each of you that have been part of this process, um, and two, to begin to talk about our next steps, to ensure that that commitment that was there leading up to the April 10th submission of our $30 million application to HUD, that that commitment is still there, and we know that it's still there, but I'm sure that you're all eager um, to hear, so what's next? What are we doing? How do we get this ball rolling? Now, on the housing piece, I'd like to mention that, um, you know, while the Housing Authority will focus its efforts primarily in, um, in terms of housing in redeveloping the public housing site called Wheatley Courts, uh, 248 <coughs> units, uh, we understand that it's important to develop uh, a good mix of housing units across the neighborhood. And so we're looking to, uh, to, ha to work closely with both the for-profit and the non-profit community in terms of developing units. So at this time, I'd like to acknowledge Mer Merced Housing, who's uh, a partner, and also, thank you. <laughs> and uh, Neighborhood Housing Services, uh, also a partner of ours on the housing piece. And um, I see uh, Dr. Drennan there in the back. Dr. Drennan works for Trinity University. Um, we are uh, indebted to Trinity University uh, for many reasons. Uh, one of them um, is, you know, uh, really Dr. Drennan has been um, just fabulous at working with us in terms of gathering data uh, to better understand the demographics, the changes of the neighborhood. But also, um, beyond the data that you know, often comes from census and from the government, she's also um, been very instrumental in uh, creating instruments that allow us to uh, get first-hand information from the residents of Wheatley Courts and the neighborhood. And so uh, she um, and her students uh, developed a survey. We received, of course, um, some input from, um, from others, including Commissioner Gambera. But that instrument was very helpful because as we transform, when we talk about transformation, you know, we, we want to ensure that we're not just transforming the physical built environment, but that we're also um, you know, creating opportunities for individuals to transform themselves. And the only way to do that is by understanding what their aspirations are, uh, understanding both their strengths and their, their weaknesses. And that you know, survey instrument was very helpful in um, shaping um, the set of programs that we look to implement. Uh, so at, at this time, if um, I'd like to go ahead and hand this over to Kathy McCormick. Um, again, I, I thank you all for, uh, for being here, for being part of this very important initiative, and um, look forward to um, continuing to provide you all with 
uh, updates as we uh, get closer to um, the end of the summer, which is when we expect uh, HUD to make announcements um, of the uh, CHOICE grant. Uh, again, you know, we have an application to HUD. It's for $30 million, and you know, this is uh, one part of what it would take. Uh, the total cost of transforming the neighborhood is estimated at $190 million. Um, and you know, that $190 million, uh, $30 million is one piece. I know I, I, I'm actually, I would be remiss if I didn't um, also acknowledge our development partner on Sudden Oaks. Uh, Sudden was a public housing community that is also going through transformation. We are getting ready to, um, to start construction on phase two. Uh, I know uh, Ryan is here from Franklin, and so I'd like to ac acknowledge Franklin Development. <laughs> yes, thank you. And uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand this over to, to Kathy. Uh, thank you all for being here. And um, I think lunch hopefully will be here shortly. Here we go. It's walking through the door as we speak. Thank you.